It's Monday on Monday, where I am long on thoughts, but short on time. The Darkest Hour, or Dunkirk, told sequentially. Historically, it is impossible to overstate the weight, gravity, and import of Dunkirk in the early days of World War II, but it's also easy to take for granted almost 80 years later that victory was inevitable. I will keep this tersely focused, however, on the story as presented in the film, rather than, say, historical accuracy and or literary comparative analysis. You're welcome. So I love to watch films like this and Christopher Nolan's aforementioned Dunkirk that ask us to see the frightening tenuousness for the reality it was at the time. To be taken under the now written pages of victory explained and soldiers now saints and read down into the fear and doubts that each person wrestled with individually and culturally. We are wrestling in our present moment feeling some days cowed with fear and others crowned with invincibility. But we wrestle. And when I watch films like this one, I want to see those wrestling hips of the soon-to-be hero pushed out of joint in the struggle. Someone who can be wrong and vulnerable who, for this or that reason, was a linchpin to the events that we now call history. And what I saw here was certainly a setup for that wrestling and vulnerability. But what I walked away with instead, aside from a perfectly normal gait, my hips in place, was the story of a man married to a singular idea, hell-bent on pushing, not wrestling. Being smarter than his dissenters, not over opening up to listening and being wrong, writing sine waves of vibrato, not sitting and working through moments of doubt. And yes, I remember that lonely phone call to Roosevelt. He was desperate, but don't mistake that for the story saying he was doubting in that moment. He was sure of his steps from the moment he was introduced through a hazy, blown-out bedroom window. Then we spent the next two hours watching him bowl over everyone who thought otherwise. Hitler, then, was not his direct opponent, but ironically, those who doubted him were, which could have been compelling, save for the fact that there was no character arc, only character crescendo. And while all of this was served with award-winning performances full of powerful moments and undeniable charisma, the story itself felt one note, a variation on one note, if you will, in successive patterns of staccato building to the most human moment in the film, which was then only undercut by the obvious manufacturing. Yeah, I'm talking about the subway scene where he finally engages others, but he's not there to listen. He's there to reinforce the thoughts he had from the moment we met him in the haze, the blown out window. But how could such an emotionally weighted story driven by the most dire of circumstances in modern human memory leave me feeling maybe just satisfied and not overwhelmed, relieved, celebratory? I believe the effect of the choice to marry our story bearer's own perceived self-worth to the performance of his idea resulted not in a hopeful story arc of triumph, but an arc of covenantal fear, wherein death is doubt for doubting the idea's performance or taking any stray steps beyond the converging straight lines of the surety of hindsight's victory. Because yes, historically, we do know that both he didn't have time to make a mistake or misstep and that his idea was indeed victorious. But in this particular presentation, it was not well poised to then lift us up at the end, although I really, really wanted it to be. Also, and I'm gonna change gears here for a second, whether we can articulate it or not, we all doubt. We want our leaders and our heroes to doubt. More than that, we need them too to understand them, to feel understood by them, to have compassion for them, and to feel it from them. But the aggregate effect of a stream of stories told where they don't doubt makes us pretend we can't, especially if we want to be heroes too. But then, two sad things happen simultaneously. One, the erosion of our ability to understand ourselves and the needs of others. And two, the construction of shame barriers of denial that yell at us to refuse aid from others. Over time, we lose the humanity of wrestling with one another and begin only shoving those who oppose us. Passion triumphs over compassion. I really dug this film, though. Every shot was beautiful. Did I mention the haze in the blown-out window? The performances were gripping. Did I mention the awards? The use of the clock was effective. I didn't mention the clock. I just wanted to better understand why I left feeling the way I did. And, well, I think I do. What about you? Is there shame in doubting? Should our heroes' doubts be told more often? Let me know. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, even if you have doubts about it. And that's my Monday. Now back to yours. Right.